Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Sandy here and as you can see I have quite a few new goodies that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, this is also my first video uh, since I've retired from Stamping Up so if I uh, name a few things incorrectly please forgive me. It's been 10 years, I've been doing Stampin' Up videos for 10 years, now I'm branching out and today we are playing with Altenew products. They're something that I have uh, been in love with for many, many years. They have absolutely stunning floral designs. And um, I'm also playing with some of their products that I'm going to tell you about as we work our way along and uh, tell you what I like about them. And in the meantime, we'll also be creating this beautiful card. I'll give you the sizes and the products and everything as we go along, but there's also um, a bunch of links at the bottom of my blog post on my blog today. There's a link under my video for that. And I'll also do a project sheet that you can print off so that you've got all the supplies and all the measurements. So I'm going to start with the crisp inks. This is permanent black. And I am playing with, as I said before, the Peony Spray. This is a lovely, lovely stamp set with all kinds of pretty sentiments and they've got an absolutely fabulous font on them too. I really like it. What do I like about these ink pads? Well, mostly I like the fingertip grip on the edge. Um, I'll put it over top of white. Can you see how there's little indented grooves? Perfect for your fingers. And then you're just going to ink up the stamp and this one works great for alcohol-based markers and I have been playing with their alcohol-based markers and they actually call them artist markers and that's what I'm going to be working with today but I'm also going to show you how to use their little mini ink pads to create this watercolor background. So I'm stamping on a piece, I think it's three and a half by four and a half and this is their classic crest solar white 80 pound cardstock and it's what they recommend that you use the markers on. So we got that little guy all stamped and ready to go. So I'm going to zoom in momentarily but I just wanted to show you a little bit about the markers. They're alcohol based, they've got two ends, there's a wide end and a thin end and you can see that. Uh, they've also got the name and the number on the little tag on the back. There's various different ways that you can order them through this company. You can get four packs, you can get three 12 packs or you can order all 36 and you can get refills for them too which is one of the selling points for me. Uh, and what I did was I ordered two packages just to see if I was going to like them. So I ordered the green and obviously I ordered the pink. And then I've also got, this is a blender, okay? So you order that separately. So I got all of these colors in two four packs and we're going to be playing with them today. Uh, for a heads up, I did not use the very, very dark of the blue. And then this is a black, I didn't use it either. And I'm not going to color the whole flower because uh, it does take a while and I love to detail colors so I'm quite happy with um, <laughs> sitting there doing that but I don't think you want the video to be two hours long. The other thing I wanted to tell you is they also have replacement tips for their markers and replacement tips and refills are not something that I've used to with my previous company but I have always thought that it would be a good idea so I'm quite happy that I found these. Okay, so after lots of fiddling around, let me show you how I like to play uh, with these markers. I've got the light, the medium, and the dark. The light and the medium I have open on the wide tip. The very dark I have open on the tiny tip. And after lots of playing, and um, I have taken all the Copic courses, and I have uh, an instructor's rating in Copics, but then I've also been playing with Stampin' Up! Blend Abilities for the last uh, however many years we've had them. And there's numerous different ways to color. So I tried all of them. And this is how I think these work best for me, okay? So I flood an entire petal with the light color. Then I come in with the medium and I start adding my shadows. And what I'm doing is I'm going really close to where the next petals are because that's where the shadows will be. And then I take the thin tip and I come in right close and I add the dark color, okay? And then I take my lightest color again and I blend with it. So it's pulling them together, it's blending them, and I like to do one petal at a time because the ink is wet, so it will fall down into the previous layers of ink. And 
blend it in for you. Isn't that pretty? And sometimes you have to go back and add a little bit of the medium because I blended it in a little bit too much. But that's part of playing with it. And there you go. And you know that you're getting good coverage when it seeps through onto the back, which is why I'm working on some scrap paper. And you can blend those nicely together. Okay, so I'm going to do a leaf for you as well. And I am going to put the lids back on these guys. You can leave them off while you're working. The nice part about these is you don't have to worry about them drying out because you can order reinkers, which is awesome! Okay, so again, the light and the medium, I am using the paintbrush ends, and then for the very dark one, I am going to use the little guy. So, lightest color first again. I'll do these two over here. So this little leaf to me is in the background, and this little leaf is in the foreground. But I'm going to start by flooding both of them. There we go. And then I'm going to come in with the medium and I'm going to add some shadows. More up here. And I'm kind of messy about this because it's really easy to blend them. I'm going to add a little bit there and a little bit there. And I'm going to come up a little bit with that. Okay, so then I'm coming back with my lightest color and I'm going to blend these little guys in. And then I'm also going to show you the magic of the blending tool in just a second here too. Blending slash erase. If you get a spot that you really don't like and you got too much ink or you went outside the line, the blending tool will also blend it back in for you. But see how nicely they blend together? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then when it's dry, you can take the blending tool. And again, it has a skinny and a fat end. And you can come in and you can add some highlights. You can build them in as you color. I always forget, so I find this tool exceptional for coming back afterwards and just taking out some of the color. And you'll see on this guy, this is how I'm getting my highlights on my flowers and my leaves. So there's a quick and easy lesson on how to do the coloring with these lovely Alt New Artist markers. Let's move on to the watercolor background and I am going to be playing with some of the mini cubes. And again, I didn't know what their ink was like because I've never tried it before. So I ordered three of the little mini four packs. And then once you decide if you like them or not, you can get them all in this size of an ink pad as well, which is pretty awesome. And yes, there are reinkers. We are going to be playing with Forest Glades and Coral Bliss. You also need a couple of aqua painters or whatever you want to call these. Watercolor brushes is what I <laughs> Alt New calls them. And uh, I don't have mine yet. They should be arriving today. But I wanted to get this video done so I could post this blog post. So I am using some left over. So I'm just cleaning them off a little bit. So you need an aqua painter or a paintbrush with some clear water. And you just want to squeeze it a few times and you're going to wet down your watercolor paper. And this is 90 pound. Uh, this is Canson that I'm using here. And I have die cut it out with the uh, Memory Box stitched rectangle dies. So this is roughly uh, four by five, okay? And then I'm working on top of the Ranger No Stick Craft Mat. And I love this one because it's nice and big and it covers my work surface. And as you can see, I am taking some of the ink and I'm smearing it right onto my work surface. That's what's cool about this is you can work right off of it. All right, so we've got a little wrinkled paper here. Let's get this flat again. Got a couple of dry spots and I'm going to zoom in. Hold on, close your eyes. Okay, so you can just pick up the ink with your wet aqua painter and you can add it and it's not quite wet enough. There we go. And then I'm going to switch over to the green. I'm going to back up here just a little, oops, sorry, wrong way. Just a hair. So you can see me picking up the green and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to blend this in in a few areas. A little bit over here. Okay, if you get a puddle like I have, you can just pick, wick it up with a paper towel and I'm going to let that dry for a minute because that's just the first layer of my background. 
again. A little bit of wicking going on here. All right. So then you want to add a drop of water to where you have your ink up here. And you want to get lots of it going on. I'm going to pat this dry so that I can do this. And so what you're going to do is you're going to flick. Cool, right? Everybody always asks me how to do this background and I keep saying you won't believe how easy it is. One drop of water in the green. Make a messy puddle. Do the same thing. And you can also squeeze to get a drop or two so that you get some areas of certain colors that you would like. I want a few more splatters down here. Okay, so you'll, you want to make sure that this area is protected. I just splattered all the way off my mat onto something else. Okay, and again, you can do a few drops here and there. Let it run. And you can let it dry like that. Or you can carefully wick some up. And there you go, there's the cool background. So if you're impatient like I am, you can also use your heat tool and you can dry this little guy. And it's going to curl up on you if you just turn it over and heat it up on the back, it flattens it out. Okay, so now we have all the pieces to put our card together. I have a card base from the classic Crest Solar White 110 pound, four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. I have my watercolor piece. It ended up being, what did it end up being? I don't know if I have a ruler in here. Four, about four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to center it, hopefully, right here. And you saw that I had a bunch of foam tape on the back of it. I go all the way around the outside edge with my foam tape because I want it to stay down and I want it to be flat. So there we go. Then I have a whole bunch of foam dots on the back of my flower, and yahoo, there is a die that cuts that beautiful flower out. And I'm going to just put it right about there. Now I have the leaf coming off the edge just a tiny little bit. You don't want it too much more than that or it won't fit into an envelope. For the last piece, I used a piece of the jet black cardstock, and this is three quarters by two and a half, and I white embossed the sentiment onto it, and I'm going to find my glue dots. There we are, and I'm going to put three glue dots on the back of this little guy, and I'm going to park it up here, just tucking it underneath the flower, and then the other thing I'm doing is I'm lining up the right hand side over here. Pretty, right? Grab your liquid glue and I'm using Tombow Multi-Purpose. I am going to add a few drops. Okay, haven't used this for a while. Let's get it going here. One down here and let's go one, two, three. And I have a bunch of sequins coming from Simon Says. I have a huge big order coming from Simon Says. I can't wait to share it with you. Whoa, we're going to have fun. And basically what I'm doing is, this is Caribbean Sunset. So oranges, yellows, and greens, basically in the same family as kind of the colors that I used on the card. Stuck to my fingers. There we go. We get that blue one out of there. He doesn't belong. There we go. And how about a medium yellow? Oh, I need my pickup tool. There we go. I'm going to put a medium yellow there. And then I'm going to take a large yellow and I'm going to pop it down here in the corner. Give me just a second, I'll zoom in so that you can see this. And there we go, doesn't that make a beautiful card? And none of the backgrounds is ever the same, which is one of the cool things about doing your watercolor backgrounds. You notice I did a little bit more red on the background of this one and it's a little bit darker, whereas I went a little bit lighter on this one. And I like to do that when I'm making multiple cards to decide which one I like better. I can't say, I actually like them both and I absolutely love coloring this flower. One of the other things I have coming is uh, this company, Alt New also has 
a stack of watercolor paints and they're on their way. They should arrive in the next couple of days and I'm really looking forward to watercoloring this flower so stay tuned. And if you would like to buy any of these supplies I have affiliate links underneath uh, at the end of my blog post and at the bottom of this video and just to let you know that affiliate links we get paid a little commission for everything that you buy through our website and what I do with that money is it helps with all my blogging expenses and and also it helps me to buy more supplies so I can make more cards to share with you. So thank you very much for supporting me. I really appreciate that. And until next time, have fun stamping.